Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to create your very own online course. Now I recently shared on Instagram that I was going to be challenging myself to create a mini course in just three days. And I did accomplish that at least the rough draft I accomplished within three days, but I want you to know that while this is going to be following that process that I took to create this in three days, you by no means have to create your course in three days. The reason that I set that really aggressive goal for myself is because in the past I, I have several courses out already and those all took me months to create and they really didn't need to. It was really just because I was doubting myself and I was overthinking things. And so that's why I set that aggressive goal, but you definitely should take all the time that you need, especially if this is your very first course, because you do obviously want it to be a quality product. So let's hop in. So the first thing you're going to need to do is come up with a topic for your course. And this is like the easiest, but hardest thing at the same time. My best advice to you is to start with a topic that you could talk about all day long for free. Something that, you know, if I were to say, what is the thing that you're most passionate about or that you're most knowledgeable about or that you're most skilled at or, you know, whatever it is that you would instantly know what that is. And especially for me, since I was on this time crunch, that's what I went to. I went to kind of the easiest thing, the thing that I'm the most trained in, the thing that I'm the most knowledgeable about when I really think about it, which is video. I went to school for film and video. I have been editing videos in a either classroom setting or professionally for over a decade now, which is crazy to think about. That's, uh, you know, a third of my life, essentially. Another thing that you'll want to think about when coming up with your course topic is you know, what is the competitive landscape like? I could do a course on a million different things, but a lot of those things are very saturated, right? A lot of courses, there's like a million different courses about insert topic here. I feel like there are video courses out there, but there's not a lot aimed towards business owners in the way that I just described, at least that I've run across. So I thought that it was a little bit less saturated, but at the same time, just from the conversations I have with my clients and from you guys, it is something that people want to know about. It's also the number one question I get asked, you know, when people hop on coaching calls with me or, you know, see me at a conference or whatever the case, they're always like, oh, tell me about your YouTube. How did you grow your YouTube? That kind of thing. And then I also think it's important if you have any kind of big an existing audience. So Instagram followers, YouTube followers, email lists, Facebook group, whoever, wherever your community is, survey them a little bit. So I asked in my Facebook group and I also asked on my Instagram stories what people would prefer for this mini course. I gave them two options and also said, hey, if you have, you know, any other suggestions, let me know. The next thing that I did on day one after I had the topic idea in mind is I came up with a title and this is a working title. Again, I think a lot of people get tripped up on this and I'm honestly like not the best at titles. So maybe do a little bit of external research when it comes to naming your course, but I try to go with something that's catchy, but that's also searchable. You don't want to make it like film for free. Fr I, don't, I don't know. That was like a really bad example, but like, you know, something that's super cutesy or like LJ's mystery course or something that's so bad. Oh my gosh. Something stupid like that. You want it to be searchable. You know, if people are looking for a course about video for business, I want them to be able to find it through search. I also determined the price point before I started. And again, this is a working price point, right? You might go back and forth as you get into the course, you might realize, oh my gosh, I poured a lot of material in here. I need to up that price or, you know, maybe this was a lot quicker and a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Maybe I'll, I'll make it a little bit lower. So this is just a, a starting point, but I like to have the starting point in mind when I'm creating the course so that I'm not, you know, creating a $5,000 course for $15, right? So again, that's going to depend on a lot of things. You're going to want to do a little bit of competitive research and see what other courses in your niche are selling for. You may want to survey your audience potentially. I feel yes and no about that when it comes to pricing, because obviously I think like if anyone were to ask me, how much do you want to pay for something? I'm just going to say $5, right? Even though I could afford more than $5. So take that with a grain of salt. I think if you're going to survey your audience, but you can go by data as well. So go by your site data, see what your average conversion on your website is, see what your conversion rate is on your website. I do, like I said, I have three other courses. 
and I also have a coaching program and things like that. So I can kind of understand where my audience is at in terms of price point. And I've helped thousands of people now through my courses and coaching programs. So I can talk to them. I can pull aside individual people and say, Hey, what do you think about this? So do some research on price price point. I decided to make a mini course. So I wanted to make this really affordable for folks. So I decided on between 15 and $25 and I landed on 25 because I ended up doing what I said in the beginning, where I was like pouring a lot more content into it than I had originally planned. And that's okay. I think 25 is still super, super affordable. The other thing with pricing is that you can always discount it, right? I can always create a coupon for $10 off and, and make it a lot cheaper. And then the last two things that I did were I outlined the course. So this, it was really just a brain dump on day one. I didn't want this to be like, I was typing out word for word, what I was going to say or anything like that for an initial outline, just go through and figure out what you want your modules to be and what you want your lessons to be. So a module is like a chapter essentially. So I have a module on equipment. I have a module on pre-production, on production, on post-production, on promotion. These are all modules or like chapters or overarching themes. And then within that I have lessons. So for equipment, I have a sample equipment list that you can shop from. I have a tutorial on three point lighting. I have, um, what else is in there? Like a general lesson on what, what, what must have equipment you have to have that kind of thing. So those are all individual lessons. I didn't write out the content for each of those things during this outline. I just wrote down module one equipment, cameras, lighting, like that kind of thing. And I use Evernote to do this. I just create like a little notepad or whatever it's called a note page in Evernote. And that's what I do. And then I also came up with the, um, the look and the feel of the course. So I went through some different slide templates. You can use a site like Canva. You can use a site like slides carnival to, you know, find free slideshows. And I just like to have an idea of the look and feel of the course before I get too deep into it too. Cause that all contributes to like the vibe of it and what you're going to include. I know it sounds kind of weird, but if I have like a super businessy professional looking course, I'm not going to maybe add certain things about memes or like whatever I might want to include. You know what I mean? So I like to come up with those things all on day one. On day two, this is pretty simple, but I went through and I created all my slides. So once I had my slideshow, you know, template in mind, I went through and I populated those slides. And what you'll want to do for this is if you've ever given a speech or like a presentation at school or at work or whatever, do the same thing. You're not going to type out every single word that you're going to say onto that slide deck. You're just going to highlight those key points, add in some images, boom, it shouldn't take too, too long, depending on the length of the course. Like I said, mine was kind of a mini course. I think I ended up with 35 slides or something like that, uh, which actually is a lot. Again, like I said, it was more than I intended. I originally wanted it to be like 10 or 15, but anyway. And then the next thing that I did on day two is I actually recorded my direct to camera videos. Now this is optional. Courses don't necessarily need to have a direct to camera videos. They don't necessarily need to have slides. Actually, you could do one or the other or some other, you know, you could do an audio course. I've taken those before, but I like to have a little bit of a combination between slides and me talking to the camera, just because I think it adds a little bit of a connection to the experience. And especially considering my course that I'm creating or that I created is all about video. I thought it made sense to actually demonstrate some video. So I just did a simple talking head video, which is just like me sitting. And I did it in front of a backdrop because I just moved. If you guys are new here, I just moved apartments. So my office is actually not set up. My lighting is not set up perfectly yet. So I just used a backdrop and I actually in this course that I created, which is live and ready to purchase now, I'll leave it in the link down below. I actually went through exactly the equipment that I used to get those shots, how to set up the lighting to get that shot and everything. So it's pretty easy to do, but I set aside a day for that. And I really, when I'm outlining my course, I guess I should back up a little bit on day one. As I'm outlining those courses, I'm taking note of which would which of those lessons would be a good direct to camera video. You know, some things like the lighting video, for example, 
I could have made a slide about it, but like it's hard to really show how to properly light a shot without just showing it, right? So I knew that lighting was going to be a direct to camera video slash a kind of behind the scenes video showing the actual equipment being set up, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's all I did on day two. I filmed and I populated the slides. Then on day three, I went through and recorded my voiceover. So recording voiceover, essentially what I do is I export that slideshow into either a PDF or a PowerPoint presentation, whatever you prefer. And then I go through and I screen record the presentation and I attach a microphone. So there's a lot of different microphones out there that you can purchase. I do recommend using a microphone if you can. This microphone is not really perfect. It kind of like picks up a lot of background noise and like this you can probably hear, but it's better than just talking into my computer or talking even into like my camera microphone. It's a lot, it's a lot better in my opinion <laughs> sounding. So choose some kind of microphone. There's a million bajillion ones out there in my course. I do showcase all the microphones that I use for voiceovers and for filming videos and stuff like that too. Uh, but yeah, just make sure that your, your microphone is attached to your screen recording program. So what I use is I use QuickTime. You can also use Loom. Loom is a really cool tool because you can show your face while you're screen recording. So that's kind of nice. If maybe you don't want to set up for a full on direct to camera video, but you still want to pop in and show your face once in a while. So anyway, choose between those programs. It doesn't matter what you choose. Just make sure that you select your microphone when you go to screen record. So it doesn't just pick up on your laptop or iMac or whatever audio. Then what you're going to do is you're going to export that screen recording and you're gonna add it into your video editor. So from there, you will cut out any, you know, long pauses, ums, mistakes, bumping of your microphone, bumping of the table, whatever, like just clean it up a little bit. And then I export every lesson individually. So if I do a lesson on um, storyboarding, that's one video. And then I do another lesson on production schedules, that's another lesson so or another video file. So I export all of these individual video files. And the reason that is, is because once you get into your course platform, you will upload them and, and you'll kind of organize them based on modules and lessons. It's a little confusing to explain, but hopefully I'm showing something on the screen here that will help you out a little bit. I edit with Final Cut, but you can use a program like iMovie. Again, in my new course, I show a detailed tutorial on iMovie because it's a really easy one to first learn on. So that's what I do there. And then the last thing I really do is add it to my course platform. So I've been using Thinkific for the past few years. It's where I launched my very first course and I'm pretty happy with it. It's a really easy to use platform. I mean, it's a little overwhelming when you first get in there, but once you figure out, create a new course, and then, like I said, you just upload those individual video files. You can also add other media types. So I did some of the extra things that I did kind of on day four and day five is I created some additional PDFs. I wanted to create like a a storyboarding PDF for you guys. I created an equipment list. I created some additional, almost like blog posts within the course that referenced other content of mine that I've created over the years. It's just kind of like additional learning. And then I also created summary pages at the end of every single lesson. So I said, okay, ask yourself these questions before going on to lesson six or, or module six or whatever the case. So those are just additional things you can do like text, you can do PDF, you can do downloads, you can do a bunch. I think you can do audio files. There's a lot of different things you can do on Thinkific. So yeah, it's really easy. And they do have a free plan that's pretty good. I also have, I believe I have a referral link that I'll link down below if you guys want to sign up and experience their pro plan for, I think it's a month. So I do have that for you guys. No, I don't think I get paid for it or anything. I think it's just a gift to you. I'm not really sure. But yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. And then from there, you really just set up your Thinkific landing page and, you know, make it look pretty, maybe take some photos, you know, add your pricing details in it there. And then from there, you're really ready to launch. So it makes it pretty easy for you. And I really like using that platform. Again, not sponsored, just what I use personally, but there's a bajillion other ways that you could do it. There's Padaya is a really good one. Um, I really like their platform as well. You can also sell a course just yourself. Like if you wanted to just share the file, you could do that. So there's lots of different ways that you can do it. I've been really inspired by those of you guys who were a little bit inspired by what I was doing and decided to launch your own courses as well. So really just continue 
tagging me if you do decide to create a, a course. Definitely tag me. I want to see what you guys are working on. And of course, go ahead and sign up for my course. It is live now. Like I said, it's 25 bucks and it really teaches you how to create DIY social first videos. And like I said, the majority of my leads for both my coaching business and my service-based business, my video marketing and social media agency come from YouTube. And I do not spend a million hours per week on YouTube. I am not the most seasoned professional in the world. I know a little bit, you know, to be dangerous, but I am not perfect at shooting video or being on camera. So you definitely can do it. I teach you really the basics of how to go ahead and get started shooting video, getting comfortable on camera, getting all the right equipment, things that you need. So definitely check that out. Hope you guys like it if you do. And with that, make sure to subscribe, thumbs up the video, comment down below, and I will talk to you in my next one. Bye.